Hey everyone, this is Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA, and I'm so excited for my call today with Kedma O. Oh, Kedma, say hello. Hello, everyone. Kedma is uh, launching a new book called uh, Target Funding, and basically she supports entrepreneurs and people with products and so forth um, with figuring out how to generate revenue, how to support themselves financially as they're creating new products, as they're starting new businesses and so forth. She's the funding queen, I'd call her. <laughs> and um, I've known her for years. I mean, yes. she has helped inventors for so many years and she can talk about her background, but um, really I've known, how many, we've known each other for like- Long time, very, long very time. long time. Uh, I totally trust her, I love her, and I'm so excited to talk to her today. I asked her to come on this interview to um, just talk about funding and to give you guys some ideas on how to you know, pay for new products that you're launching and that type of thing. So, Kedma, can you tell us who you are and why you know what you're talking about? Oh my God, I love that. Well, first of all, thank you. It's an honor because I respect you so much. And you know, I love that you're not only an amazing influencer, but you're a woman, uh -huh. you know, right? So we always, I love to have more diversity. So that really excites me. Uh, so I'm a fifth generation entrepreneur. So as you're listening through this, if you're first or second, woohoo! when you're a fifth generation, you're always inventing. You're always looking at improving people. My husband says, stop improving me. I'm fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it, we're just set that way. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I have worked with over 10,000 businesses. My passion has really fallen in innovation where we look at you know, scaling companies, but really within the innovation around financing. Because if you don't have the financing, I mean, as great as your idea is, you may get stuck, right? You may just try, try as much as you want and you may not be able to get there just because of, you know, one part of that phase you weren't able to fund. So, um, and to your point, I've worked with inventors for well over a decade and I currently sit on the board for the United Ventures Association where we advocate every day and we work alongside the U.S. Patent Office. Uh, and then I just... Uh, I literally just left a month ago as the head of innovation for the small business development centers uh, based in Oregon, where I really focused on innovation across multiple industries. So that's a little bit about my background. You also wrote for Entrepreneur Magazine. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes. You, did a lot, you know what I mean? I've done a lot, yes. She's yes. Uh, forgetting already <laughs> you know, stuff that she does. Um, and she's uh, launching this book coming yes. up. So we want to honor her there. Okay, so uh, let's just get into some Q and A because I really yeah. I wrote these let's down. Do I wanted to ask you, or you know, but yeah, but whatever works. So okay, bringing a product to market can be costly, yes. right? It can cost yes. a lot. I mean, what if you yes. had a new idea, a new invention, a new creation, and you still yeah. have money in the bank? Yep. Um, and you know that's a big blocker for people, right? And sometimes. Like they don't always want to license or, you know, the rent third party companies. They kind of want to create their own business, but they just don't know how to create funding. What do you um, suggest? Do you have any ideas for inventors to get started right away? So I think to your point, I have seen inventors who have launched products that are under 5,000 and I've seen inventors who have launched products, a hundred thousand and well over a hundred. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed when I've worked with inventors is so many times they've spent money that they should have not spent their own cash because there were resources available. So I will tell you right now, having done this for a very long time, if you're at the ideation stage, there are resources. There are literally advising and support systems just to support you on the ideation stage, especially if you were thinking about, you know, do I, you know, what's the feasibility around this? Should I even think about bringing this product to the market? I was working with a client. I am not kidding. They spent over a hundred thousand dollars on an idea that they believed, honestly, they believed everybody was going to buy. Mm -hmm. And when they came to me, the first thing I said was, did you check with other people before you launched? No, of course I didn't check, because I knew they would want it. So I'll tell you really quickly what the product was. The product was an invention where they decided to combine the idea of a computer case, right? Because we all have laptops with a diaper bag. Okay. Because, because they believed that you should change your kid's diaper, put the diaper 
dirty diaper back in, but you could also use it for your computer bag. Now, I don't know if you see any issues with that. Well, but, I mean, my initial, <laughs> my initial freak out is I don't want all that EMF around my kid, but I could kind of get it. I kind of understand. I mean, you got a lot of stuff around you. You got to carry it anyways. Put right. it in the bag. I get it, but I can understand why like moms might not. And that's exactly what was happening. Moms could not understand in their mindset how to make that too. So one of the areas you probably want to step back in is can you do some feasibility without it costing you a lot before you go to market? There's funding around patent searches, right? I've seen people pay 1500, 3000 just for a patent search where for me, we've done patent searches with people where the entire cost of the search, the patentability opinion, the looking at prior and, and, and pending, $250. So one of the things I want to teach people is when we think about funding, I want you to think about grants in the sense of subsidy, discounts, absolutely 100%, or it could be uh, a gift. It, there are many, many ways funding comes through. It doesn't have to be just in money. So you're saying that if they have a physical product idea, rather than immediately go into their pocketbooks, start digging around and looking for places who will fund it in mm -hmm. some way. And we'll talk about that. Yeah, I'll talk about how I structure the book and what to look for. But you know, I'll take, for, for example, um, my, own, my own product. We came up with an invention called Lolly Good. Mm -hmm. Basically, my son is autistic. He didn't like to eat food. He kept going for candy. And I kept arguing with him, stop eating the candy, stop eating the candy. And one morning I woke up and I said, well, why do I argue with my son? It's not fair to him. Why don't I just create a healthy candy? So Lolly Good is the first ever lollipop that's infused with probiotics, protein, and fiber. Well, in order for me to do the feasibility, it would have cost, because I checked it out, about $10,000 for people to look at it. But instead I went through a university I got through the MBA program. I worked with MBA students and the university professor. They did the entire feasibility at no cost. It, go ahead. I, I got to ask, like, who in the universities are doing that? Like, is it like a certain division or? MBA? Yes, yes. And we can talk more in deep detail as we go through the questions. Yeah. But the, what I love about universities, so go to your local university. This is one tip for your audience. Mm -hmm. The university does capstones all the time where they're bringing in undergrads or master uh, people who are completing their masters who want to help businesses. So it could be the engineering department. I've worked with clients who get their proof of concept through the engineering department. It could be the marketing department. It could be the technology department. I've had a database completed through the technology department. It depends what you need. So first we have to step back. What does, what do you need? Where are you stuck? And can a university team help you go along further without paying a lot of money? So like for the feasibility, it's the marketing department. It's uh... for the feasibility. It would be um, usually it's the business department. Okay. Yep. Because they're looking at business entrepreneurship. So um, MBA students, uh, undergrad business students, and, and the professors are always looking for them in most most schools, you can reach out to them and say, I'm interested. When is, you know, when is the opening? What does the opening look like? And that's exactly what I did. So it's usually like fall, spring, like either. It's always usually fall, spring. I actually got in the summer. Cool. Okay, cool. That's really interesting. <laughs> so um, can, they, can they create prototypes? Absolutely. So um, the question though is, is that, you know, if you have a very, very big, um, project, they're not going to do the entire proof of concept because it may not, you know, it may go past a semester. Sure, sure, so fun. what we usually tell our clients is come in with, you know, what's the biggest problem you need to solve? What's the biggest testing you need to solve? Let the students be part of it. And the students love it. Right. And guess what? All the equipment is there. So there, I know it makes sense. So they're working on it. The professor's overseeing it. And then it's solving a problem. And then if it makes sense, maybe the second semester, you may be chosen or maybe you can move forward from it. That's amazing. So um, what that's just one, one, one funding program. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so it's not like cash in hand. It's like, uh, 
you actually are just receiving something for free. Is that correct? Okay. So let's change our mindset because this is a problem we have. Okay. We entrepreneurs think cash is king. No, resources is king. Actually, resources is queen if cash is king. So okay. let me explain. If you come to me tomorrow and say, you need $10,000 and I say, why? You say, well, you know, I've spoken to three vendors and in order to get my proof of concept in place, I need $10,000. And I say to you, well, we have an equivalent that can get you to where you want to go. And instead of you having to pay back $10,000 in debt or equity, we can get that same work done. Instead of 10,000, it's only going to cost you 1,000. You've received a $9,000 grant. Whether we want to slice it or not, it's because you would have paid 10,000 and we just got you the equivalent in the same quality for the same results for a thousand. That's a $9,000 grant. I love that. That's a really good idea. You're absolutely right. Cause a lot of times we're thinking, I don't have the funding, I don't have the funding, but you're not even actually thinking about, you're still receiving, you're just doing it differently. So bingo jackpot. Fair enough. I completely get that. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, so that's really helpful. So things to think about are the resources around you and the people yes. and the situations around you yes. where you're being gifted in some way. So, but grants aren't they complicated? By the way, like if you get a grant from somebody, I mean, isn't that like a nightmare to write a grant thing? I mean, I don't know. I don't do a good. Okay. Grant. So here's what I will tell people: okay. there is always a funding party and funding parties happening every day. Okay. The problem is, is you're not being invited and you can't even crash the party because you don't know where the funding party is. Okay. So first we have to figure out what each person needs okay. and where the funding party is and then decide how to do it. The first thing I tell my clients is we have to create a funding calendar. 90% of the grants always ask the same thing. They always ask, your, 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 your name, your website, what you're interested in getting funded, your background. If we dial that in, it's a system. You are not going to take hours and hours and hours. Most of these funding programs are not asking for 60 pages. They're asking for at most anywhere from one to 10 pages. The question is, is would you be willing to put together, you know, a, a, essentially a slide deck, one to 10 pages, in return for $25,000. Of course. Okay, so what we have to do is take the myth out. This is not nonprofit work where the grants are 80 pages long. This is organizations that are targeting for-profit organizations that know they are busy, and we'll go through some examples. But you're still, if, you're, if you don't know where the party is, you can't go to the party. Fair enough. I mean, I know, like, so, like, with retail, I teach retail, right? People are always thinking that retail is complicated and they have right. all these stories in their mind. And I can see how I had the same concept about grants, and maybe it is yes. stupid. You know what I mean? But I just remember people having to write endless pages in the past. So I guess that was my assumptions. So you're saying my assumption is wrong, and there's a lot of opportunity out there, especially probably for women, minority owned companies, stuff like We're gonna that. We're going to go into that. Absolutely. Got it. Okay, cool. All right. Well, um, <laughs> that's exciting. You're so cute. I love your face. Um, okay. So um, let me pull up the next question. Sorry. I just got Go ahead. excited with talking to you and then I forgot what I was going to ask. Um, okay. Most inventors have read and researched funding. Still yep. had, they didn't have any luck. So <laughs> what makes your book target funding different? Yeah. So most people who read any kind of articles or looked at funding, they see it. If I'm going to put an image in your mind. I want you to imagine that funding is like a pizza pie because I love pizza, right? It's an entire pie. And when people come and talk to me about funding, they say, I want that lender. I want that loan. I want that licensing. They imagine it's one. I want you to imagine that every part, part of that pie is a slice. 12 slices is 10, 12 funding strategies. Can we just look at her face? She's so cute. <laughs> She's so happy. She loves talking about this. Sorry, I just get your face. So okay, it's so. Because I, I get so excited with helping people find funds. If someone, if Karen came to me tomorrow and said, because of you, I landed a $70,000 grant, that excites me. It doesn't excite me if she came and said, 
Well, I got debt because of you. I had to get that loan because of you. So that's why I get excited. So think about 12 slices and each slice represents a portion of the funds you want. Okay. That's how we're building it. So target funding, what does target marketing mean to you? You work with clients every single day. What does target marketing mean for you, Karen? Hyper-focus targeting for- Yeah, exactly. Hyper-focus targeting based on your customer profile so you know your demographics. Yeah. The same option and opportunity we do for funding. Okay, I don't, okay, so- Say you have a baby product. Can you explain that in a very specific? Yeah, yeah. let's take it into a real life thing. Give me an example. Not just a baby product, okay? It's a baby product that is actually been designed by a woman entrepreneur okay. who's Jewish, who lives in Atlanta, Georgia, who has a dream of creating this product to help um, future babies who may have been diagnosed with autism. Okay. I can find funding as a woman-owned business. I can find funding if they are uh, classified as Jewish and, 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 and into their business. If they are in Atlanta, Georgia, we can go based on location. We can go based on social impacts or there's money tied to autism. We can go by the stage of the business. Meaning? Uh, meaning, are you at research and development? We may want to look at SBIR, STTR, which is a special federalized fund program that helps entrepreneurs and innovators solve big problems. And if you don't know this today, I can speak because my son is autistic. Uh, autism and now is considered a national epidemic. So the Small Business Innovation Research is actually coming from funds from National Institute of Health, National Science Foundation. Mm -hmm. They're constantly looking at solutions that they can't solve. So I can go there. I can also go to the Autism Society of America. I have just literally exploded the funding opportunities that are available to this person that doesn't exist. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing my white male customers scream right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Because I'm always telling them about, can you get certified? And then they get all upset. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We love our white male, especially if you're a veteran, if you've served your country, we can add that in. I get, I'm just making jokes. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I just hear it all the time. They, you know, like. I feel a little angered, like yes. both, you know what I mean? Because yes. But you're right. It's sliced up by actually the prospect, the situation, who they're targeting and all you that. Nailed stuff. it. Right. And that's what we do it. Yes. We slice yeah. it up by, by phase, by location, by industry, by social. Exactly. That makes perfect, perfect sense. That's hilarious. <laughs> Just Why? A joke. Because I mean, you know, like they do actually get upset. Um, okay. So tell me about this target funding. What's in it? And, and when does it launch, by the way? It launches July 12th uh, yeah. is when the book comes out. Okay. And if, and actually if anybody like listens and wants and gets the book, I'm happy to come back on and just do a special webinar for your, for your group, for anyone who says, yeah, just yeah. as a thank you. Uh, but what you're going to love is literally the book is a GPS roadmap. If you never talk to me again, I actually break down how I find funds. And every chapter belongs to someone. So there's a chapter for women, a chapter for minority, a chapter for inventors. We, we haven't forgotten our inventors. So every single chapter is sliced. So you may categorize in three, four, or five chapters, right? Because you may say, well, I'm a veteran. Well, there's a veteran chapter. Or I am, you know, I'm a woman. There's a woman chapter. And then at the end, I lay out an entire funding roadmap. So literally after the book you can go through it we have curated over a hundred resources in the book alone That's so awesome. i don't just tell you right there I, we literally interviewed over a hundred and they are right in the book so you can go through and you can reach out to the funders what about like amazon sellers and e-commerce sellers because i deal with a lot of those and maybe yeah. they're new brand new innovation but they're like products they're doing well or they need to grow yeah. Maybe they come up with a new idea for an existing product, but maybe they're tied on cash. Do you have any suggestions or anything like that? I think, you know, there's a lot around technology funding that we want to pay attention to. And these days, it depends how they want to drive their business in, you know, our, um, you know, because there's a lot around social media and marketing funding, right? There is strategies around that. I would tell whoever's listening, this is what you do. Write down all your needs first. Everything you need right now. I usually tell clients to write what they want 
because usually that's a much longer laundry list. Yeah. But, but you know, you can write what you want, but then I go, I ask them to put in order priority what they absolutely need and then determine, is there any resources that they can tap into to get that before spending the money? So here's a simple thing. In the last two years, I have well over been given over a million dollars in PR stuff. Why? Because I have an entire podcast strategy. I have an entire speaking platform strategy. And so I get all this free publicity, right? Because I know how to leverage. It would have cost me a million dollars to hire a publicist to do all the things we're doing. So, so again, it's, it's really understanding what you're trying to do and then first figure out, then figure out how you can do it without spending the money that, you, that you're thinking you have to spend. Pause. Get away of like getting everything that you want, but not really get away. But you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, hustling. Hustling is the right Every word. Day, I, yeah. I don't know if your audience know this, but I'll disclose I'm Israeli. <laughs> I have no choice. We have to hustle. Yeah. You know, we began with a desert and now we have like land and now we grow food. So, so it's embedded in how I think. Yeah. But I think that all entrepreneurs need to hustle. All entrepreneurs need to hustle. Money should not be what stops us. Totally get it. I love that. You're right. So Ked, Kedma, um, what else can you tell us about that's Why I did it. Yeah. McGraw-Hill picked up the book for Target Funding, which I'm really privileged. And I asked McGraw-Hill, one of the largest publishers in the world, why did you choose a first time author talking about funding? People do funding all the time. This is what they said. You had reverse engineered and thought about something no one else did, but you went through it as your life. Why do I do this? Because if you had walked with me, Karen, in the year 2000, you would have found me sitting on a curb, literally sobbing my eyes out because I had just filed for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Now, why do people file for bankruptcy? Three reasons. They lose their job or something goes wrong in their business. Mm -hmm. They have a health crisis or they go through a divorce. Most women file bankruptcy for this th third reason, which is what I found myself in. Two weeks later, in that situation, I go to my apartment and I get an envelope from Capital One. I open it up and it's a credit card for $200. Now, when I was a little girl, I used to play Monopoly. I don't know if you've ever played Monopoly. Do you remember how much you get when you go around the Monopoly board? It's been a long time. I don't know. $200, Karen. So I start screaming up and down that I'm back in the Monopoly game. Wow. <laughs> I'm back in the game. Yeah. And at that moment, I said, what if I go on a journey to uncover all the funding resources available to people like me, good people, smart people, because I had my MBA, but people who had just gone through a crisis and didn't have credit, didn't have the collateral, may have filed bankruptcy. And that took me on a 15-year journey to uncover the variables and help thousands of people figure out how to target funds. That's why I wrote the book. Love it. So what advice can you give inventors who are struggling with funding? Okay, I'm gonna tell them right now to stop and not go to their lender right now. <laughs> stop and don't give their equity away right now. Okay. I want them to stop and think about what do they need first? What resources do they need? And write down their variables. Everything in variables. So write down what stage are they in? What's their ethnicity? You know, because everything is found in funding. So we have, we have funding for Muslim and, and, and Catholic and Christian in our book because we know where the money is. So figure out your variables. Religion? We have a whole focus on religion. Yeah. Religion. I don't care what religion someone is. I just want to get them the funding. I don't know. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um, so I would say stop, decide all the things you need, put it in order priority, and then determine your variables. And then let's focus on how to target the funds so that you're not struggling. So do you need to hire a writer to do this? You know, it depends on how busy you are. If you're Karen, yes. Because yeah, Karen's like, I can't, I'm so busy, I can't do it. I'm how do you and add that to your life? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, but I, I think, well, here's what I tell people. I 
I am, I am a really good magician, but I am yet to be able to offer more than 24 hours a day to someone. Everybody gets 24 hours. So if you tell me you're too busy to get the money you need, we have a time management problem. <laughs> Well, it depends. I mean, right? I because we know like how many hours it requires. You know what I mean? Like that's right. Part. So I would say this: it doesn't require. It requires a little bit of hours to determine your variables. Yep. Right. And the targeting of funds, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it yourself, or we're putting out a literally a system automated target funding report where you can put in the variables, and you'll receive a customized report that you can execute on. So, so we're that. When's that coming? Uh, hopefully in the, at the same time as the book, we're working really, really fast for that. Okay. Um, and we are so confident that, um, we're going to put a price point on it, but if you get funding from our plan within six months and you send us the proof, we're going to refund you like 80% of what you put into it. So we're going to give your money back because you found the money you needed. Wow, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I just know I know what I know and I wanna I want success stories. No, I get it. I get and it. I am crazy. <laughs> I am crazy. I mean, can't you have it all? But um, I love that. I love that so much. Um, okay, so where do they go to Oh, where do they find me? Well they're gonna find me through you. Okay. You're of course. Um, they're gonna find me through my first and last name, which is super easy. Kedma O. So K E D M A O U G H dot com is my website targetfunding.com and LinkedIn. And then um, I do speaking engagements all over the country. So you can kind of check where I am, but just reach out, reach out to Karen, reach out to me. I always want to make myself available. Thank you so much. Kenya. I'm so excited to read it myself. Thank you. Um, you, told me you were making this book. I'm like, Oh, I have to record, <laughs> record this one. I mean, like, I'm here to help. I mean, I love her. Thank you. So, uh, Thank you. She's the, she's the real deal, guys. She really cares. Can you tell that she cares? She really, really cares. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, good luck with the launch. If Thank you're you. watching this, Woo! stuff and uh, support her, please. Um, and also, it's interesting. And I'm going to buy it too. So, um, send you so much love, Gedma. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Bye. Hi. This is Karen Waxman, Retail MBA. If you want to learn how to get your products into retail chains, go to retailmba.com like how to sell the Walmart, Best Buy, Home Depot, Macy's, Kirk, grocery <laughs> store, and so much more, uh, retailmba.com. Otherwise, uh, be on the lookout for additional trainings and content I create um, through our website, our blogs, and everything that we do. Thanks so much.